Hello everyone, this is Greg, welcome to the stream and for whatever reason my microphone seems to be a bit too uh, sensitive, I want to say. <laughs> um, but yeah, hi again. You might be seeing a bit difference in the lighting setup today and that's because I actually had to redo most of my setup following the death of my previous keyboard. Um, as you may have seen, like on Discord, like every every one of like the fifty million times that I kind of mentioned it, <laughs> I was very pissed off. Um, but yeah, the, the the mechanical keyboard that I got off like ten months kind of died, and it died very spectacularly by trying to press every single key it could all in one go, and just like going haywire. It's amazing. So, yeah, I kind of had to get rid of that. In the process, had to kind of like redo a lot of the cable management because the previous keyboard also had like a pass-through thing, so it was two separate ones. And in my infinite wisdom, I ended up not uh, threading them together, but threading them almost exactly opposite one another. So I had to like undo the whole stack <laughs> so that I could get them out, and then. And I do the whole stack all over again, which means that I get a, a lot of my cables are not where they're supposed to be as they would usually be. But that's that's something for next week, Gregor, to kind of deal with since I'm going to be off work next week. But yeah, let's uh, let's do the thing with the thing. Since it says on the title, it's a this day in gaming. We might as well do this day in gaming. So get some music on like possibly like slightly louder music <laughs> it's always like very hard to tell because these i generally keep like a bit low so that i don't have to like yell over my like the the audio input but then in order to to gauge if people are actually hearing this i i end up having to rely a lot on the equalizer that xsplit has which honestly wasn't even like a feature to begin with, they added it a lot later on down the line and it's 
not really the best anyway. Um, also, why is my brightness so high? Oh, there we go. But yeah, this is the end gaming, December 13th, almost the end of the year, two weeks to go. So, this is the start of the infamous holiday season, more or less. It's a couple of weeks before Christmas, it's when everyone's kind of rushing to get like all their shopping done. So, of course, a, a lot of games target this release window of like 13th to the, like the 25th. Uh, of December to, to like get their big names out so that like they can capitalize on the consumer frenzy for lack of better word. Actually, not, 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 not for lack of better word because I think that's actually accurate to like a very high degree. Um, but yeah, I expect to see a lot of big names in today's game releases as soon as the website loads. Uh, or at least if not like big releases because traditionally the, like the March to April season also has like a lot of those at least ones that kind of like make uh, sense for like you know Christmas gifts hopefully no um, Christmas times actually because those have more or less always been awful can't actually think of like a good Christmas game um, I can maybe name a couple that have a A Christmas level in them, but not uh, actual Christmas games, Christmas themed games, games that are built around Christmas that are also good. That being said, let's go. 31 years ago, December 13th, 1991. Also, by the way, I am tired as fuck. I'm back on caffeine, but it doesn't seem to help because of, you know, all of the other things. We'll talk about them later. Just keep, keep in mind, I'm extremely, extremely tired. <laughs> and um, it's probably gonna come up um, on camera and on stream and in the way that I'm kind of talking and playing games and stuff uh, but yeah 31 years ago December 13th 1991 we've got a few releases in fact like all of what I'm seeing on the first five years of the list is all Japanese games like games that have launched in Japan uh, starting with Game Boy having Final Fantasy Legend 3 coming out in Japan, the third action RPG uh, sequel. I've only played marginally the Legends games. Um, I know, uh, like Rooks. I don't know if he's around. Like when he's around, you can probably ask him. He he's been a lot more into them than I am. The, the, seamless, uh, seamless. Um, well, I, I forgot the word. <laughs> needless, needless to say, um, the, the, the Legend series is kind of like a lighter version of Final Fantasy. I, I think it's supposed to be like a different name in Japan. I think it's called like Saga or something or another. Um, but they're kind of like mini. RPGs, mini Final Fantasy-ish RPGs on the Game Boy. Um, I'm not actually playing them to be honest, so... I may I, I, I have played like the first one a little bit, but that's about it. Um, <laughs> and uh, speaking of the same, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, the Manhattan Project came out on the same day on the NES. Honestly, after the first one, the one that also made it onto the arcades and did like a splash, I guess. I'm not sure if this one was like well received or anything. I, I'm not. I, I've not really even seen it to be honest. It's, I think, based on the animated series of all things, um, as of like the other two, of course. But uh, I think this one was like specific to like a. Um, what's it called? Like, it, like it, it specifically follows like some kind of like arc from the show. Um, I want to say that like it is probably well received. I mean, I could probably like, check. Let me give me give me just a moment. Yeah, it says here like it's like well received. <laughs> um, Hamitsu gave it twenty-seven out of forty. I guess that. Counts as a fail? 
Because I think like Famitsu at this point is like contractually obligated to give forties to like all Japanese games. <laughs> Needless with xen xenophobic comment, but um, I don't think I've ever played this one. I, I what I have played though, which is you know, but badly segue. Uh, Twenty six years ago, December 13, nineteen ninety six, we kind of entered the golden age of um, oh, not the golden, maybe the silver age of gaming because. The 1996 to like early 2000 period is one of those um, times where, as uh, at least for me, they have they, they have achieved like the perfect balance of technology being high enough for them to convey what they want to do, but not being demanding enough that they literally have to spend like months to years just like building a game, so they can kind of push out games fast enough that they can experiment with uh, whatever it is they want to experiment but it still has the graphical fidelity to convey those experiments in, in like a proper way um, but yeah clock tower who here knows the clock tower series for all I don't know how many person singular in chat clock tower a um, god Point and click. I think this is like the, this is like the PS1 version, by the way, not the SNES version. Uh, the SNES version was a kind of side-scrolling deal. Um, this one is the PlayStation reimagining, I guess. I, I don't know if it's supposed to be like a sequel or anything, to be honest. But it, it's a 3D point and click adventure game with a good deal of horror elements. Actually, it's like, I think probably one of the first 3D um, horror games coming out in 1996 because, I mean, like, Resident Evil came out on the, like, in the same year. Um, I want to say Alone in, in the Dark was, like, a couple of years earlier than that, and everything beyond that, before that, like, Ecstatic and, uh, God, like, text adventures, I guess, at that point. These were like the four bears, like the, the, the precursors of the modern horror adventure game. Um, as far as I remember, the central gimmick of Clock Tower, generally, like the first couple of games, of course, um, was that you play as a character that's kind of trapped in a place. I think the actual SNES game had like a, a Clock Tower. The second one, I think it's like a different kind of thing. It's like a university or something, as far as I remember. Um, but you're basically kind of trying to solve puzzles and move around the levels while there's like a, a killer on the loose, basically, that attempts to kind of stalk you throughout the levels. Um, like the, the whole deal of the game, the the killer is trying to ambush you and follow you throughout the levels. Generally, you don't really know if and when he's gonna strike, and that's kind of like the whole appeal of the game. It's a lot less... Actually, I don't, I don't know if this is 100% true, especially for like older games, but it's supposed to feel like it's a lot less scripted. Um, so that you don't actually know that, oh, I'm gonna go into this room, like I did last time, the kid is gonna be there for me and I'm gonna have to escape and you know, it's not kind of like laid out in such a way, it's, it, it, it's presented in such a way that you're encouraged to think that the killer is roaming around the levels and they're trying to find you so you better keep moving so that you don't give them as much of a target, more or less. Um, I've seen the PS1 uh, Clock Tower, I haven't played it. I've played a bit of the, uh, any, uh, of the SNES one. It's like interesting, although the the side-scrolling camera doesn't really, you know, help a lot. Like I, I feel, I feel this is a kind of concept that works a little better in 3D. And like if you remember the, the, the whole thing with uh, what, what was that game on October? The Coma. Actually, both the Coma and like the other one, the. Um, the school one when like the actually three of no two of them were like school games let me let me just like bring up the list because i'm trying to remember the 
the name of the of, of that particular side-scrolling horror game that did nothing for me, uh, and it was yeah the coma the coma I cut basically the espresso. Um, as far as you remember from that side-scrolling horror doesn't really do much for me, and I feel it doesn't really do much for anyone unless you kind of base it all around cheap jump scares, which I don't like. Um, Clock Tower is like a different thing though, it's like a, a lot more interesting and they do encourage this idea that the killer can strike at any time, but he's not gonna, but he may. Uh, it's a kind of like tense environment of like, will he, won't he, kind of thing that uh, to this day, I think the best game to have done that particular feel is Alien Isolation. Um, mainly on the virtue of how it's alien pathfinding slash AI kind of works. Um, but yeah, it, it's still like a good early example, especially if, if you care about the historical value of it. Um, where there's like a, um, god, a, um, forget the word for it, I'm, I'm, I'm really bad with words today, I, I, did, I did warn everyone by the way, but, <laughs> uh, it, it's a good early example to see how the, um, the subgenre kind of evolved during the years, it, it's actually legitimately very interesting to see you know, clock tower on the like the one end and alien isolation on the other end and kind of like all the evolutionary differences that kind of happen in between those two. Um, fun, 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 fun. So uh, it's it's definitely worth a look, even just for that, you know? Um, and speaking of that, on the same day, we also had another quite interesting game come out on the Sega Saturn. Anyone remember that console ever existing? <laughs> Sega sure hopes you don't, because there's been literally zero games that originated on that that have been ported to other systems. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still kind of salty about uh, Panzer Dragon Saga, which is an amazing JRPG that like 99.9% .9 of people ever want to get to experience, because Sega are being idiots. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, um, Sega Saturn had a release of Tactics Ogre, let us cling together for, again, you guessed it, Japan. The other um, strategy RPG um, series, I guess. God, the actual series is called like Ogre Battle, but the second one was called like Tactics Ogre, and it was like initially like an SNES game, and then it got like a reimagining on the Sega Saturn and there's like a PSP version and more recently there's like there's been like a Switch, PS4, PS5, Steam release of the same called Tactics of Early Born or something. Um, if you've played Final Fantasy Tactics you kind of know what this is. There was a time where these games were like a dime a dozen and Square the like at least two or three like mega series of them. Basically how how it was for like Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy IV, Square and like Phoenix. <laughs> um, so I, I haven't actually like played a lot of this because on the PSP this had a a small issue. Um, what's it called? My version of it at least had like a small issue where it like, like skips like on on the on the little like micro, whatever they were called, the mini MD discs or whatever they were called. But it is a... The, the games are basically very similar to Final Fantasy Tactics, where you get an isometric tile-based map, you get a bunch of units that can multi-class and kind of like pass down abilities between classes so that you, over the course of 40, 50, 60, 80, 100 hours, you get to kind of mix and match to make your own kind of overpowered mini gods basically and um, it is turn-based, stat-based, RPG, strategy, positioning matters, 
Uh, I think in like uh, this one, height also matters as well as distance. Um, just like a bunch of things actually, but it, it, it is like a, a fusion between a JRPG and a turn-based strategy game. Quite fun. I, I enjoy these games. Unfortunately, not a lot for streams because um, I do know it's very boring to kind of like either see me do moves mechanically because I know you know you know this is like the best move to do. I don't really like. I, I, I tend to kind of like gravitate between two ends, like the one being like overanalyze every move for like half an hour, and the other one being just like do shit and don't talk about it. Um, and I feel like neither is kind of fun for people to watch. Um, I will say though, if you like this kind of game, which is to say the isometric turn-based strategy RPG thing, there are a lot of options nowadays. It's like um, basically, uh, what's it called Wargroove is a slightly more strategy-oriented version of this. There's uh, Fell Seal. There's well, I guess. Final Fantasy Tactics, Tactics Advanced, Tactics Advanced A2, um, The War of the Lions remake that I think is also... No, I, I don't think, I'm, I, I like, it is also on mobile phones. Let me just like, show you, because I, I, I did actually install this <laughs> um, for the for like a, a social function that I had to do like a few years ago, a few days ago. What the fuck am I even saying? But yeah, I... The actual fuck. You can actually get Final Fantasy Tactics. I don't know if you can actually see this. War of the Lions, which is the remade version of the Final Fantasy Tactics PSP port. Um, there's like that too. Or like there's like Tactics Ogre that recently came out on all, on all the recent systems. There's a few more kind of like oddball series like Agarest. Um, Models. It's like a bunch actually. It's like it, it's still like one of those subgenres that doesn't exactly dominate the game market, but there are always examples coming out. This guy is like another example which is like much more over the top and grindy. Um, and the core concept is like you get units, you raise those units in in accordance to like the game's systems as the game is that you're playing. You kind of want to min max everything so you get an edge over other characters, and it's all isometric turn based combat. Uh, Tile based isometric turn based combat. Um, I don't know, like, you could also do a lot worse, and there's like a lot of kind of like lighter um, examples of this subgenre. Personally, my favorite recently has been, well, recently, the last. Three to four months, maybe it's been uh, into the breach, made by the developers of FTL, a little known indie game that probably no one has ever heard. <laughs> um, in which you you do this whole isometric turn-based combat thing, but with a twist. Whereas you there, there's like a time travel alternate reality thing involved that allows you to carry over like a pilot of one of your mechs every time you finish a timeline or every time you abandon a timeline um, and the whole idea is that you get to play some randomly generated missions based around specific mission types and eventually do like a big showdown kind of mission and try to survive basically it, it has a few roguelite elements in it because you know FTL I kind of made sense. It's actually a very, very fun game because the combat is a lot more, feels a lot more puzzle-ish than, you know, just RNG. Yes, there's like a random element involved, but basically all of the units or like mechs that you can use in the game have specific strengths and weaknesses, and you're kind of meant to synergize in between using like the three that you're allowed to take in each mission and it, it's a lot more reliant on both movement, line of distance, uh, sorry, line of sight, um, preventative actions such as preventing enemy spawns, etc, etc, etc. Quite fun. Uh, if, you, if you want like a fantasy thing, if you must have something like Tactics Ogre specifically, Final Fantasy Tactics is probably the series that did best. And maybe this guy, depending on your tolerance on grinding, it kind of depends. Um, 
or you could try like the tactics soldier since it's now on like all modern systems anyway. <laughs> and speaking of modern systems, it's like the <laughs> modern. <laughs> it's like something that was a bit controversial when it came out 20 years ago, December 13th, 2002. I did not realize it, but uh, today, 20 years ago, or if I had put it better, today one of my favorite Zelda games becomes 20 years old. Yay! The GameCube mod, but not the one you're thinking about, it's probably the one you've heard of. Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker came out in Japan. Um, the at first reviled for its cartoonish, super deformed, cell shaded art style. And apparently the Wind Waker kind of worked his way through that into being like one of the favorites of the community overall. Personally, I don't know if it's like my favorite, but I did enjoy it a lot while I played it to the point that I did go and buy the Wii U version a few years down the line with like the intentions to kind of like play it eventually. Um, so in this version, Link uh, is a seafaring uh, hero, which means that the entire plot's action takes place across a huge ocean, uh, littered with a lot of islands, which kind of... I guess they serve as both the, the cities, the hubs, the exploration points, and the dungeons of the game. There's other places to explore rather than just the, the islands, and some islands are a lot bigger than others, but for all the annoying things I'm about to list about Wind Waker, the, the one thing that they did very well was the exploration and more specifically the, the sense of wonderment of the open sea of just like jumping in your boat the um god it's like king of red lions i think it was called it's like basically a sentient boat uh that you get because you know why not um, so you basically get the, the sense like i can jump in my boat pick a direction and sail un until i find something interesting and the way the game is built you're never more than five or ten minutes away from something interesting. So you get like this excitement of exploration, more or less. Which is like a good thing. Games tend to kind of like forget this nowadays. Especially like the open world games don't really focus on the wonderment of exploration. Or like the, 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 the sheer thrill of discovering new things without knowing what you're gonna get. Uh, Primarily because nowadays most open world games that are, you know, big names are Ubisoft games and those are kind of made by a, the, the kind of soulless copy-paste machine that uh, gave us, I don't know, like 50 <laughs> Assassin's Creed sequels so far <laughs> or something, uh, but you get the point. Um, Wind Waker does exploration really, really well, and unfortunately, the being the, the first of its series to try this, they didn't exactly nail it. Uh, Often times, because the sailing mechanic was built in such a way that you needed to have favor favor favorable, yeah, favorable winds. Uh, it is sailing after all; you're using a sail, so the wind needs to be blowing in the right direction, otherwise you're kind of crawling to a standstill. Um, it, it's kind of annoying. The other annoying thing is the whole inclusion of Tingle, the very, 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 very annoying side character, uh, which in this one you need to constantly interact with because he's the source of maps, the items that kind of show you the way towards all the adventures if you don't really feel like aimlessly wandering for like half an hour. Um, and yeah, like eventually you get like a way to control the wind, but I, I feel this is like how uh, remakes or remasters can benefit from, you know, five or ten years down the line. Uh, a good example is the Wind Waker HD remake, which is the, the Wii U one I was mentioning earlier, um, which added a very, very early item with the something, I don't remember what it's called, like it's like the, the the direction sail or something like that. At any rate, you, you, you basically get a sail that lets you dictate the wind's direction or rather move um, like uh, irrespective of where the wind is blowing, which immediately made it a lot better. Uh, you do have to do like a little side quest to it, but it's not like a hidden one. You 
it, it freely gets advertised the, the moment you start the game, the, the moment you get the boat. So it's not that bad. It, it's like a good like example of the remaster being the definitive edition because not because it fixes the graphics or anything, because the graphics are more or less the same, just high resolution. Uh, being cell shaded, it, it doesn't really benefit from you know a lot of like the modern. Uh, graphics techniques, you know, <laughs> Wind Waker RTX or something. <laughs> um, but it, it did benefit from some re design revisions, so to speak. Uh, there's a few others as well. Some items are consolidated a little better in the uh, remaster in the inventory. Um, some side quest chains have kind of been touched up a bit so that they make more sense or the, the hints that they give you are more clear, and so on and so forth. It's the best edition you can probably play. And I don't actually know, it might also be on the Nintendo Switch. You know, if, if you want to get the definitive edition on some, on some console that hasn't yet died a slow and agonizing death, like the, the, the Wii U did. Um, but yeah, fun game, regardless of where you choose to play it. Um, and speaking of fun games, it's uh, something that may be a bit relevant to today. 15 years ago, December 13th, 2007, PSP had a, well, it's not exactly a sequel, I think it's like this is supposed to be like a side thing. It's also not the first one that's on the PSP, but Wipeout Pulse made its way on the PSP uh, 15 years ago. Um, the God was it like the fourth or like the fifth Wipeout game. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the Wipeout, the Wipeout series is basically a um, God like it's like a series of racing futuristic video games, sci-fi racing basically. You're using anti-gravity ships, pods. I think the game called them. I don't, I don't really remember. I think they're called pods, but anyway, they're like anti-grav ships that race around horses by like floating like half a meter off, it, off, off, off the surface. Um, they're usually ga uh, games. They're usually weapons that you can use to mess around with opponents. There's uh, God. There's a bunch of things you can do. There's like boosts. There's like hidden paths. All of the levels are kind of sci-fi, interestingly sci-fi. Um, I feel like I, I, I'm not a big racing fan generally, so maybe maybe, maybe the, the, the next few sentences are not, you know, representative, but I feel a big part of why, why Powder as a series was kind of interesting is the soundtrack. It has always been, for me, the soundtrack, because it's like one of the very few uh, games at the time to go very, 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 very deeply into techno music, um, kind of like industrial techno sci-fi-ish music. Um, so let's see, uh, Wipeout Pulse, I think, I know it's the second one on PSP, I think the first one was called Pure or something like that, and I'm pretty sure that like, either Pure or Pulse had, had also like a PS2 port at some point. Um, this day, 15 years ago, the PSP version came out. Uh, but yeah, it, it's like a sci-fi racing game where you race around tracks with anti-grav ships while a groovy, groovy, not not groovy, like a, a bitchin' <laughs> techno soundtrack plays in the background, if, if that's the correct term. Anyway, it's iconic. It's an iconic series. It's like one of those series that, like, you know, this is like a Sony series. Same, same way as, like, for example, like Gran Turismo or, like, for Nintendo F Zero or Mario Kart or whatever. You know, you, you kind of, like, get the point. Uh, it's one of those series that, like, every, I think, every con, every PlayStation console so far has had a Wipeout game come out on it at some point. Uh, it, it's kind of like a Sony thing. It's like, PlayStation 5 and there's like a Wipeout the Revival at some point two years from now. Uh, who knows? But yeah, let's say it, 
it's hard to talk about the series that like I, I get the appeal of racing games generally. I do occasionally enjoy them, but it's not it's neither for the realism nor for the high speed. It's mostly for you know the the adrenaline, I guess. Like it, 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 it bears uh, mentioning that. I generally like the more arcadey ones, so it's like Need for Speed, or more specifically Burnout, uh, which is very ridiculous and over the top, or, you know, Wipeout as well. Uh, not a zero though, because that shit is hard as nails and I don't do well with it. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah, let me, let's move on. So, it turns out there's like a lot less releases than I expected on, you know. December 13th, I, I would have expected more big name releases. Um, but if you want like a big name indie release, six years ago we had a port of Stardew Valley. For those of you that haven't heard of Stardew Valley, that come out from under the rock again. I know I keep saying that a lot, but Stardew Valley is one of those indie darling success stories that you know everyone knows or should know. Infamously a one but not exactly one man project because apparently while well, the guy was working his wife took out like two jobs to you know be able to support him and his dream but it did pay out because Stardew Valley was the filled like a niche that I don't think a lot of people knew they had uh, which a few years prior or something like Harvest Moon would have probably filled up better um, but yeah, it became amazingly popular. It eventually got like a multiplayer mode. It's a farming simulator in the way, but not really exactly a farming simulator, but kind of like a farming simulator in, in which you play a person that has recently gotten a farm out of inheritance and they have to turn it around from a kind of bram bramble and tumbleweed abandoned like patch of dirt into a thriving, you know, production unit or something. Um, as with like the Harvest Moon games, there's also a village of supporting NPCs, some of which you can romance because that's a thing you do in Harvest Moon. And in this specific one, there's also like dungeons and combat and fishing and stuff like that. But the the, the general, the core concept is you get to grow things and sell them to make a profit. Um, and for such a basic core concept, it's amazing how well it's done. Because honestly, Stardew Valley is very, very popular. Up until these days, like people legitimately only playing Stardew Valley. It's, it's, it's kind of the same Skyrim-ish thing that people seem to find themselves putting more and more and more hours into without having like a very concrete goal in mind. Um, I guess it's kind of like a comfort game, kind of like a thing you can kind of play while you have something like a podcast or like a video playing on in the background and you more or less do things on autopilot and enjoy yourself. Perfectly fine. And this behemoth of an indie game, I guess, came out on the PS4 six years ago. And it's one of the few because like moving down the list, there's not a lot more. Uh, four years ago, we have Greece. G-R-I-S coming out on the Nintendo Switch, December 13th, 2018. We've actually streamed this a couple of months ago. It's, I think like the, the link is still in the chat, so you can probably check and also see the VOD for it because it was like a one stream game. Another short platform game, not exactly a platform, puzzle platform game, I guess. Um, we streamed this on September 8th, uh, fully. I, I didn't go back to like do all the collectibles and stuff, but it's a rather interesting game. Very heavy on the symbolism, very kind of like mellowed out for the most part. Um, it has a very striking color palette and also the way they introduce each color. Uh, because the game kind of starts a bit, not monochrome, but kind of like a bit, kind of like toned down. And the more you complete levels, the more colors get introduced into the color palette. So like eventually you get like this, this like, full screen extravaganza of like different hues and uh, like different shades and stuff like that. It, it's very well done. Um, 
The animation is also very interesting as well. But the, the game itself is like really short. I, I think I finished in like two and a half hours um, without going back for collectibles and stuff, which I guess would probably take like maybe another half an hour. Um, so definitely not something I could, you know, fully recommend. It's a very good game, but only if you think you can afford the asking price for a more or less three to maybe four hour ride. Uh, so yeah, you know, there's that always. For me, it was worth it. It was fun. I I fully enjoyed it and didn't really expect it, to be honest. In fact, the, the Spanish Games Month in, in which this kind of happened was one of the most surprising for me because like three out of the four games that I streamed there, I, I legitimately enjoyed and I finished all four of them, even though the fourth one, Castlevania Lords of Shadow Mirror of Fate, was, may have devolved at the end to kind of like a spite conclusion, uh, but you know, at the end of the day, eh, what can you do? It, it, Greece, as far as I'm concerned, is a very, very good game. Um, on the same day though, we had Judgment come out on the PS4, the Yakuza, or sorry, the Like a Dragon spin-off, uh, present-day spin-off where you play as a detective whose name I can't really remember. I haven't actually played this, but if it's like any of the other Yakuza games, you probably know what to expect. A big open world of uh, like Japanese uh, commercial district, I guess. I don't, I don't know if this takes place in Kamurocho or something uh, somewhere else, but eh. It's probably going to be very similar anyway, like a lot of uh, side activities, mini games, arcades to go play in, um, freaking mahjong to kind of ruin your life with, uh, and a bunch of other things. And it's a action adventure brawler thing, I guess, is the best way to describe the, the like a dragon games. Um, I know uh, occasional. Uh, Kind of like uh, chapter here, my elder mammoth has streamed the entire video. I don't think he was very impressed by the end because of some story missteps, but eh, I've heard good things about this. Who knows? And actually, with this and Hell March, we, which is the something account, we have come to the end of this thing gaming, which means I've actually done it and finished one of these in 40 minutes or like even 35 minutes. Wow. Yeah, there weren't a lot of games to talk about today, unfortunately, and most of them kind of Japanese releases that I haven't played, so... Eh. Um, but yeah, since this is done, we can move on to the main course, which is... Redout. Redout made by... what's the name? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, well, I was thinking of like the next game, which is um, Close to the Sun, made by like Stormy Cup. Um, but yeah, Redout. Uh, of 34 big things, that's the studio's name, by the way, uh, from Torino, Italy, coming out in 2016. This is, as far as I understand it, a kind of wipeout-ish racing game. I've never played it. I think I only own it because of like it, it was like in a bundle or something. We'll see. I don't typically play these games uh, on my like off time, so. I don't really know how much I'm gonna enjoy this, but at the end of the day, it's gonna be just like one stream. Let's see, like what we do. At, at the very worst, it's gonna be like interesting music and stuff. Uh, but before all of that, I've changed the stream title. Let's run ads because you know, Twitch says so. And we'll be back in a minute with the red out. And while that's happening, you can also. Uh, Music, thank you. I was like, hold the music down and just move to this and to launch this. Who knows? Maybe we'll have a fun time as well. I hope so. Yeah. Welcome back, those of you that were in Adland. <laughs> uh, this is Wipeout. No, sorry, this is Redout, um, which is totally not very similarly sounding as well. 
It's a racing game and apparently has like a career mode as well. Whoa. Let me just lower the audio a little bit. Who's the yeah, difficulty there, though? Ah, rookie. A link to Epic Games account, excuse me. This game came out in 2016. How does it have Epic Games integration? Where's the sound? Where's the sound? Come on. Oh, music was going past that. It's like gonna go like this. Because I don't really know. So, let's see. I, I've never played this. Immediately, I like the stats. 13 players. Oh my god. It didn't lower the audio. Uh, I hate this when they do like the, the linear thing. Um, maybe we can talk about this a bit later. But immediately I like the thing, there's like 13 players playing this game at the moment, the game tracks it in-game. It's kind of like hilarious. Congratulations on entering the Solar Red Hat Racing League, Rookie. Your first ship will be sponsored. You may purchase the others by winning races. Each team has its own strengths and weak spots, so choose carefully. Select your starting ship now. Okay. <laughs> That's a lot to kind of like just drop on you. Welcome to the Solar Redout Racing League pilot. Select your starting ship now. Oh, it's like got like class one. Oh, you actually join teams. So let's see. There's. Let's start with this one ESA, the Vanguard, Kuningsworth. Engineering, I'm probably mispronouncing it by the way. The Centaur, Suha AG Racing, Quarin, Conqueror Technologies, Gila, Acera Takadora, and the Lunare Scuderia, that's like the Italian team, <laughs> GT9 Stradale. Okay, this I assume, uh, yeah, it says like Neptune DLC. Ho ho ho. Because if I like press this. To unlock this feature, you need to own the Neptune DLC and have it installed. Nope, I do not want DLCs. Thank you very much. So, what do we want? We, we, we want like good grip, right? For example, for like starters. Um, so, is that, that going to be like the, the Centaur or. Gee, like the Tagador, I guess? I mean, this one's nice. It, it's got like both speed and grip, but like structure, I guess, is like the health pool. Yeah, just give it the a GT9 doesn't rely on energy at all, but it's blazing fast and very responsive. Our first ship is sponsored by the Federation. Choose carefully. Fuck it, you know what? Let's you do are this. now oh. ready to race. Achievement. Select an event from the next event menu. Okay. Uh, welcome trial. Like, it doesn't actually let you choose it. No, wait, it does? Tande Kalima Race, okay. That's like both in the same uh, thing. Oh, so you, you actually race and you get the rewards for like winning races, like the, the reward there. Fuck it, you know, time attack, why not? Good good time. Pure events won't allow you to equip any power-ups. Sure, why not, I mean, we can give it a try. Let's, play. Let's see if the music is any good. Press any Three, button to continue. Two, one, Wait, how do I fly? Go. Oh, okay, it's like, hold on. Uh, accelerate, reverse, turbo power up. Camera look back, turbo strafe, pitch, steer. Okay, so it's like basically accelerate, brake, turbo, and the power up, okay. Oh, holy shit, the, the drifting is just like the, the right thumbstick. That's not good. By the way, stealing this control is actually the painting pack, turns off she can't. Straight right to continue. Um, I don't know if I like this. I really don't know if I like this. Such a weird way of doing things. I don't know, like, I, I, I'd much rather have like momentum-based drifting rather than the, the straight thing that like, the game is asking me to do. Because, ugh! That is not... 
Use that pitch control to face the explode without going to the floor. Oh, and it's inverted. Fuck me, it's all inverted. Oh, this sucks. <laughs> Let me just like give it another try. Three, like, I'm doing. two, kind of. one, go. Yeah, you need to like move into the corners a little. And we'll make more aggressive you know, to get the, you know, the, the, the turns that you need to like maintain speed. Hey, mana, hi, how is it going? How are you today? You can see me there? <laughs> yeah, okay. Get my, get my comfort while you're working there. I call it the snake inter special. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> I kind of keep the attention here. How are we doing today? How long time no see generally, but then again I haven't screened in like two weeks, so that makes sense. Oh, 
Ah, no, no. New record. New record, yeah. It's like smashed into the wall. Yeah, see? Fucked up. Major. So I'm just like, I'm not paying attention to channel the moment. I'm very bad at these games, so. It's like, even like looking at my just <laughs> fly off the flood or something. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not seeing anything better than bones, to be honest. I was like two seconds behind the the gold. Let me give it another try. Racing games are your thing. Me, mine neither. But Three, I mean, if it, two, if it fits the, one, cha the, the, the 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 challenge, I guess. Oh, it was like a boost that I haven't been using. Well done. That's like so clever of me. Never never use the boost. You know, show off like that or something. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't normally play. Racing games that maybe played like a handful over my my entire like lifetime, but you know this one kind of fits the Italian month uh, theme that I'm going for. So you know, <laughs> and I also I also had it from like a sale or something or like a free weekend or whatever. Uh, so yay, <laughs> let let games for me to have to buy and stuff. Coming through the wrong mic. Oh no. You know, it might actually be. And guess what it is? <laughs> it was coming through my webcam. Uh, lovely, awesome, lovely, amazing, awesome. Um, so yeah, I, I actually had to do a thing. And let's start again, yeah, I guess. So there was like a thing that happened. The keyboard that I had Three, kind of two, died over the weekend. One, and actually, Speaking of which, there we go. Uh, the keyboard that I had kind of like died over the weekend, and in the course of removing that, I may or may not have changed a few USB slots around on my PC, which also, I guess, kind of means that everything kind of like the plug and play did its fucking wonder again and selected random default devices. That's, that's, that's actually the the long and short of it. And I didn't even think to look because it's been so long that I've got the, like the focus right on that, uh, yeah, I, I didn't even like think to to check if, if it had kind of like fucked up everything. So yeah, screw Logitech on that account as well. And yeah, I know it's kind of like hypocritical to say this, the walls yeah i mean thanks <laughs> thanks i'm not i'm not <laughs> despite appearances i'm not trying to hit the walls um, but uh, yeah like i said i don't play these kinds of games i'm not very good at them
guess I need to work a bit better on like my break. And no, I, I, I don't mean uh, the, the one where I smash into the walls to break, but using like the actual break function to do things. Not that. I don't know, I, I feel like I need something like a bit better funding. <laughs> Eventually. Ah, oh, I missed it. Final Again, now that I'm like focused. I'm not focused, but you know, might as well just like give it a try. Three, two, one, go. See, like a, a big problem of why I don't really enjoy racing games as much as, as other people is there's like a big element of like memorizing involved because no matter how good of a driver you are usually these games and like the at least like the camera angles that they're kind of like built around uh, are so close to the ground that you generally have to kind of uh, at, at least some parts of the level memorize so like you, you know what like all the like the, the, the hairpin turns are and like, like all the the heartbeats basically are. Uh, so, we're generally not very good at these kinds of games. That's like probably why I never amounted to anything like F0, to be honest. Kind of annoying. Yeah, no worries. I mean, uh, probably not be watching this either. <laughs> Which is why this is only gonna be one stream. <laughs> no more. Let's move on to like the, the more narrative heavy stuff. But I'm moderately to do that. Like maybe not to do that. At least possibly interested in.
suspect that in order to get, like, get the gold times. Uh, yeah, I, I, I suspect that in order to get like the gold times, you probably need to hit like all the the boosts at like bare minimum. One last try because I'm very very stubborn. <laughs> Let me get to like another. I love the little like speed line effects though. I just like noticed it on the top of the screen. When you're like going fast enough, you get like the little like anime speed lines. Which is hilarious. Also very fun. Breaking is not like the best way to the combination of all three of them, both like drifting and steering at the same time. Yeah, it's a Does it like your best lap count or is it like a combination of like another age of like is it, is it, is it like your best one then it must be just like go easy? It's like a speed line. The, the, the anime speed lines, love it. Hey, achievement. You, you can't actually see this behind chat, but I got an achievement. Gold medal awarded. Yay. Look at that. Leaderboards. 101. Like, I actually dread to see, like, what, like, the top, uh, like, uh, positions do. Let's see. Race center. Career progress 1%. Oof. Got all the shit that you need to buy. Oh god. Let's see. So what's like a a, a ship worth to buy? 6500. It's like not that bad. And eventually you can. But I, I I guess you also kind of want to. Uh, upgrade Here, you your ships. Turbine magnet structure areas. energy. Engine, magnets, structure, energy. Oh, you, you only buy like one upgrade per sh per. Uh... Okay, let me, let me like max it out. Like, buy all of the upgrades and see like what that does. 
Uh, so let's see. Next event. Their time attack. Sunday Kalima race. Let's see. Race to the finish line. Two laps. The Sunday Desert race, a popular event that has been held regularly for the last years. Here, rookies approach their first corners and build their experience for future races. Oh boy. <laughs> now there's going to be like more ships on the track. Lovely. Five opponents. Ooh. Hold on. Let me just like put up the, the, the music. Three, two, one. Go. I don't actually mind the, the music is really good. Which I guess is like for me at least is like what I'm expecting from a game like this. Honestly, my, my biggest problem with like these kinds of games, like specifically the sci-fi ones, is I don't know why the, the, the developer's insistence of keeping the camera so close to the ground. Like I, I would love if I could like raise it a little bit so I could see a bit more of how my my vehicle is kind of like placed on, on the track, right? Which I guess isn't really like a I guess if they did that, the speed, like, the sense of speed would probably, like, diminish a bit, but I don't know. I kind of think there should at least be that, like, the, the option, right? But unfortunately, that isn't one. Hey, Congratulations. first place. Ooh. still running <laughs> sucks to be them okay we get like so okay i guess like you get like xp you level up etc etc see moom time attack okay pure time attack to laps it's like a new track one, this time go. yeah time to fuck it up It's like a lot tighter than the previous one. Okay, like, like, fair enough. Good sense of progression. I guess. I guess in this one, it's like more important to learn like when to uh, break because it, it's like a lot less wide. It's a lot easier to kind of like get smashed into walls and stuff. Now the problem is I, I keep paying attention to the like the indicators of like, turns and I keep expecting them to be a, a lot more sheer than they actually are. Uh, which is a problem, broadly speaking. It's like the, the boat 45. Like 50. Um, so wait, if you get like below 52, it's like doesn't you know pass? Yeah, you don't pass, like, you don't qualify. Danger here. Right. Danger. I'll integrate it 10%. <laughs> God, I smashed so much into walls and I'm, like, about to explode. Yep. Like, my car is, like, get a lot of this idiot. Three, two, one, go! 
Oh yeah, I see the little health bar now. Okay, bad enough. Saint smashes of a Curious to try this, but it's like lower and uh, the ship a bit after like the initial takeoff. Like a kilometer and a half in the jump. Wow. Let's see. Let's see. We can do this. It's like your consolation prize. Enjoy. <laughs> Again. Three, two. I, I I'm, one, I'm like of the opinion go. that if, if if I don't like quite manage like baby first courses, then I'm I'm definitely not gonna be doing well in, in, in like subsequent races, you know. This is like generally in, in, in games like this. Get like a, you know, I, I get the feeling that like, the, the, the first few races are always kind of like a, you know, please, please learn how to drive with these, and then, then we can talk about the the, the, the big boy stuff. So maybe not not not, not bounce into like one of these two corners. Yep, or just like
Okay. Oh, for point three. God damn it. Congratulations. Silver medal awarded. Congratulations. Consolation prize awarded. <laughs> I'll get it. I'll get it this time. Three, I feel it. Two, no, I don't feel it. One, go. Maybe, maybe if I say that I feel it, then I'm not gonna get it. You know? It's like one of those, like, fake it till you make it kind of feel. Also, I feel this, this probably is some kind of like hidden mechanic where like if you boost one of the the boost pods, you actually get like a little more kind of, like speed. Like, I'm not sure if I can just like you know confirm it. But it certainly feels like. That. These kinds of games do have like a lot of like hidden tech. Let's call it that. Or like if if, if you know like a, a crucial little like weird like interaction that the game has, uh, you actually get like you know a huge advantage over other players. I think I'm gonna get it though. Unless I stop grinding through. Hopefully, we'll see the, the, the boost here, which I did. Under a second. Congratulations. Silver medal awarded. Womp womp. Wait, we have a soundboard for that. Last last try. Honest. Then I'm just like gonna move on with my life. I always say that but I think I really do as I say. Yep. 
So, yeah, like, when I was talking about, like, hidden stages, like, for example, if anyone's ever played Mario Kart, there's, like, in that one, there's, like, the the, the dash boost thing, where you kind of, like, if, 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 if you drift sideways and, like, press the accelerate button at the same time, you, you lay a little... Um, you get, like, little sparks from under your car and you, like, go a bit faster. Uh, that kind of thing. Like, usually games have that, like, racing games have that, because, you know, it's a a little bit of, ex like, extra control over, like, other opponents. Come sim swing race. Three, two, one, go. I don't know if I guess swing race is. I'm pretty sure I can find out soon. Oh, no! <laughs> okay, air in this is bad. We need to land as soon as possible. It's not like the previous level. So you just you know, jump and fly off into the distance. If you smash into more like you know, five rolls at the same time, at the, in, like ten seconds, the the announcer gets muted so that it doesn't feel like patronizing. Danger! 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 You're on the side. Uh, I am feeling it, I guess. Congratulations! The fuck is Gold this? medal awarded. Yay! <laughs> so I, I will give them one thing: the the races are short enough that you don't really have to worry about. You know, it it, it flows fast and like easily enough that you don't have to worry about shit. Um, power up own, power up upgrades, race tracks unlocked. It's like only twenty five races. So what the fuck is a Platinum? Are you kidding me? There's like more... Wait, land, last man standing? Wait a minute. In last man standing, the slower contender is eliminated each lap. Stay ahead of the pack, but don't risk too much. Mistakes can be fatal. Okay, fuck it. Let's do it. Three, two, one, go. Also, can I say like how shitty it is that like... You starting like last place for like the last one standing thing it's like yeah you're the player you you figure it out you, you you're not like the bot that can only take like turns perfectly I love this jump. It's like he loves it. Pick four. Who names the like sci-fi futuristic racer Pick four? Then again, like F Zero has like a protagonist that called like Captain Falcon, so eh. Who am I to judge, like, sci-fi names, right? There's, like, certainly worse ones out there. Okay, so I have to, like, survive one more lap. Third place goes. Lawrence. So who's like second place? Nigel?
horn I don't know. Looks like I'm one of the three. like one more lab after this. Ooh. Sounds like a like a Left and right, and it's the worst. Congratulations. Like sausage was like the, the last elimination. Win three consecutive events. Okay. Sure, I guess. Oh dear. Explode five times in a single lap. <laughs> wow. That's a fun one. Level 6, ship class 2 unlocked. Let's see what that is. So class 2, 30,000. GT10 Veloce. Veloce, I guess, maybe. Give it like a challenger achievement. Is this really like this short of a game though? It's like 4 classes, 25 races, that's it? Cool, I guess. I was like, wait, Frozen Speedway? Jesus Christ, please don't. Uh, it's gonna be like all slippery and stuff. Welcome to the brand new Alaskan SRRL racing complex with an average temperature of minus 12 Fahrenheit, minus 24 Celsius. AG engines and magnets have no cooling problems. Just make sure your air intakes don't get blocked by the snow. Wait, is, that, is that like a legitimate? Oh, you need a ship class one. Oh, come on. So. Dude, you're not allowed to use the level 2s yet. I mean, I can't kind of like make sense if it's like in tears. Three, two, oh, one, go. I'm gonna say though, I also like the environment. Like, they're interesting to look at. Like, you know, however much of it like, you're gonna be looking at like, a scene uh, in between the like, fragments of the the walls kind of dash ahead of things. Yeah, it's not like this guy is going to be known as well. It's been a little bit of a lot of For sure, it's like a lot more slippery here.
Yeah. Yeah, I need to be like two seconds faster, which means probably like not crashing into like a couple of the walls there. <laughs> one wall, one second, Three, that kind of thing. Two, one, go. We get it. Ah. Dam, dam, dam. says <laughs> again again we we we, we Three, get good through two, iteration right one, go they get i mean yeah in a few not in this one yet it's like still learning the the ins and outs the le learning by by grinding my face into every single wall Like the iterated AI design, yes. Harder for you as a player and more interesting for like whoever is like watching you the game. Like for what it's worth, if you kind of like focus on like the center of the screen, then it, it, it all becomes like a lot less you know strobey. 
Because like if you see like all the effects are kind of like from like the the middle part of the screen outwards. Like the, the, the center part of the screen like merciful is like very focused on like the track itself. Which is really good for like these kinds of games I feel. Yeah. We will get there. I only need to be like a second and a half faster. Three, two seconds. Two, one, go. Even more fair, like most of like the visuals you can actually turn off. There's like a, as far as I've seen, like a very like interesting like, slider system on like how intense you want like all the different like effects to be. You can actually just, like give it a, a look afterwards. Awarded. Consolation prize. Well done. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Three, God. Two, uh, one, see, this is why I don't go. stream these kinds of things. I get too upset.
Still like a Silver full second below gold. Eh. It's like actually like platinum times above that as well. <laughs> yeah. Three, ah. two, one, go. has gone downhill in a hurry. Yeah, I think this is enough for this uh, race. We can always come back to it, like when I'm feeling masochistic still. Your time attack three left. Oh, it doesn't like automatically move on unless you've uh, like beat it. Power-ups are not allowed in this time attack event. The comp sim track is rather slow and presents some sharp turns. Wait, how did I? Oh, it's like this. I've only done like the swing race to this. Okay. Sure. Fuck it, let's give it a try. Three, two, one, go. 37 seconds. Ooh. Okay. The problem with like small like horses like these is there, like also not a lot of like space for you to kind of like fuck up. Uh, optimize like, the, the world that we're going for. So there's like not, not a lot of like time saving you need to like, do. do, do. I mean, I I I I know the feeling. All too well. Final it's like why I've been kind of like missing streams at the moment. Not 
not very happy about it. Danger, danger, Will Robinson. Don't explode, Will Robinson. more with this game to be honest it, like it's like more of the same more or less let's do like one more course and then call it for tonight Three, two, I mean, this is like something that I, 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 I could like see myself playing off stream casually but you know, you know, I, 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 I've been like this for the last couple of weeks, to be honest, which is very annoying. Um, I just like come home from work and it's like literally I'm just like standing, like sitting in front of the PC trying to decide what to do and then just like, like, it goes to like, uh, like 11 p.m. and I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna go to bed. I'm, I'm not doing anything anymore. But here on the plus side, I, I, I did like start like implementing some lifestyle changes, which may or may not have accounted for like, the tiredness. It's like going to the gym, for example, and generally making like a better uh, effort at uh, Jesus Christ, uh, making like a better effort at uh, being healthy-ish. Uh, which I don't, I don't know. I'm definitely gonna give it a try because I had like a minor like, health scare a couple of uh, weeks ago, and I much rather than like, you know, repeat that. Position one, look, the first guy. I'm just mumble at this time. Yeah, I'm sorry. Like I said, um, not feeling it. You know, it's it's not that I'm mumbling. It's that the, the game is like way too loud, and the microphone is way too low. Uh, it's just like like thirty percent. But yeah, generally I've I've not been feeling it either. I've been very very tired lately, mostly because of work and other. Related uh, projects, let's call it. Um, I'm like the problem is that uh, what a finish. Achievement. The problem is that I've kind of also been trying to get like a bit healthy. Stop and do something you feel better about. No, I mean work, uh, not. Uh, yeah, I, I, I did get like a bunch of other goals while, while you weren't here, by the way. Uh, <laughs> see, there's like... There's like uh, one, two, three, four, five, five. The first five were like all golds, and then there's like a silver, bronze, another gold now, etc, etc. Um, but yeah, it's, it's mostly been like the workload kind of like too much. Something I can't really stop doing. <laughs> Um, and like a bunch of non-stream related things that I've been doing at home argument the game I mean I, I, I don't hate the game um, what I meant was like it, the game was like slightly too loud over my microphone for whatever reason I think it might actually be better if I can lower it from the mixer here something like this no 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 I, I wasn't talking about the game work has been to, to put it a bit mildly, has been a bitch. <laughs> um, and I've also kind of started going to the gym as well. So 
I'm, I'm, I'm generally feeling like very sore and tired already. Um, wait, 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 what does it say target speed? Ugh. Yeah, gym is a good kind of tired, but I'm not used to it yet. That's kind of like the problem. And I'm, I, I'm also not used to like both the energy boost that I get and how like how badly it affects my like everyday life until I get used to it um mind bonus. Like, I don't get what this level is um but yeah like I'm, I'm like very badly out of shape I've been very badly out of shape for like most of my life so um for the last like three weeks that i've been going to the gym it's all been like muscle spasms and um like sore back sore calves so sore, sore everything basically everything here everything is pain <laughs> um and because apparently i never do anything half-assed I've not only started going to the gym, but I've started working five kilometers per day every day that I'm not going to the gym. So I don't really get like a lot of like downtime generally, unfortunately, um, which is probably dumb on my behalf. Um, in the midst of that, we're also kind of dealing with like a few IRL things, good things, but you know, it still takes like a lot of energy to kind of like probably deal with. Um, so yeah, the, the, the end result is that I've been waking up at 4 a.m. every single day for the last week and a half. Um, I've actually been going to the gym like in the morning before work at like 7 a.m. Um, because, you know, sleep is for suckers, I guess. <laughs> or something like that. Oh, okay, okay, I see. I see what I, I see how this works like the longer you you go to like above 700 kilometers you get bonus time that gets deducted from your actual time okay I mean this is like an interesting game mode uh this is like a very interesting game mode so wow I get well done them I guess in speed mode staying above the minimum target speed means seconds subtracted from your final time okay makes sense I kind of want to try like a tier 2 race, just like so I, I, I get to use this. Um, change my pattern. I mean, it's mainly, I, I feel, because of like working out. Um, it, it, it kind of like messed with my regular sleep schedule. I've, I've, I've even like started cutting down on coffee as well. Like what I'm currently drinking is uh, tea. Uh, herbal tea as well not not like black tea so that's like cutting down a bit on the caffeine as well um <laughs> which uh can't have helped i mean it, it will all kind of like sort itself out in like a week or two honestly uh i don't I, I, I don't really worry about that too much but it does mean that i've been consistently uh I've consistently been reaching like 10 p.m. and feeling like drained is, is like a good word for this. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like not complaining in, in like any uh, like way. I'm just like saying that it, 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 it really needs to kind of like, you know, balance itself out. Oh, balance itself out a bit. Position 5 out of 5, that sucks. Like, this ship actually handles a lot bit differently than the last one. Which is why I'm having a bit of trouble. Also, it might be that this one doesn't have upgrades yet, so... That could also be why I'm having so much trouble. 
and I'm like so far behind everyone else. Like 10 p.m. now. Yeah, and I'm about to end the stream. Um, not, not really. <sighs> yeah, eliminated. Yep. You arrived fifth. Try again. No. Um, this is like where I kind of like. Uh... Oh, and not. Cool. So yeah, we'll say that like yeah, there's like a 30 second ad that you don't actually get to run any 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 longer on this channel. Um, and honestly, I was supposed to run it like five minutes ago, because it's like a, a little timer thing that I have up like every hour. It tells me that I need to run an ad so that it disables pre rolls. Um, not very happy about having to do this, honestly, but can't really do anything else about it either sadly um but yeah it, again it's like oh god is this like upgrades really um I'm, I'm, I'm already at like the point where i'm about to go to bed the new outbreaks are bullshit yeah like i said i don't like doing that but you really kind of like have to so that like it doesn't spam everyone with the pre rolls every time they try to join the stream. Um, and on that subject, I think it's about time for me to go get some rest. I'm not. I'm definitely not going to bed yet. But my joints are a bit stiff at the moment from my first foray into the big boys weightlifting, <laughs> which is to say the uh, actually got like some weight training done on monday and it still hurts badly uh like i i need to kind of like lie still for a moment and not like tense up with streams and stuff <laughs> i've had trouble sleeping i i don't i don't actually have trouble sleeping um uh, oh wait you mean now you need more sleep due to winter i mean yeah fair enough I, I, I can get behind that, but, you know, uh, kind of sucks, unfortunately. Um, my problem has been I, I, get, I go to sleep, like, very easily at night, but uh, it feels like I'm kind of running a bit higher on energy than average or than usually, and that sadly translates to, like, my body kind of, like, waking up a full two hours before I'm kind of, like, used to <laughs> Which um, isn't great, honestly. Like yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm like by 11 p.m. I'm, I'm out like a light, and uh, then I just like wake up at 4 a.m. <laughs> like why? I, I usually get up at six or like seven. Why 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 do you do this to me, body? <laughs> Get up at like two, four and then just like sit there doing nothing for two hours, two and a half hours basically, which k kind of sucks. Oh, God. Speaking of which, I think it's probably time for me to go nighty night. Um, uh, I'll call this one like a half done game because honestly, I don't really see the uh, the point of going on <laughs> a lot longer but yeah um i i will try to go live tomorrow again with um god what's like the next one on the list so it's like red out and then uh it's like <sighs> joe no wait no close to the sun Close to the sun is next. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, there's like a schedule. I don't just like, you know, I, I don't currently do games. Like, there's like a theme uh, on, on, on like what I do currently. Um, oh, that's like interesting. 
Apparently the game, apparently Redout got a major update today. <laughs> uh, let's see. Added launch option to run the game either in DirectX 11 or DirectX 12. Fixed frame rate dependency during wall grinding. <laughs> you can now consistently grade your face there. <laughs> God, I, I love it when patches have like a sense of humor with them. Reduce frame rate dependency on wall bouncing. Frame rate limit is not correctly applied when game start. Adjusted field of view. Ghost barriers are no joke. We made sure one of them is floating fault. Blah, blah, blah. Fixed issues with DLCs sometimes not being recognized. Fixed multiplayer crashes, cleaned up leaderboards from cheaters. Okay. Uh, restart option in the pause menu is no longer enlarged. Uh, so after restart, the selected drawing options in the pause menu wasn't probably highlighted. Okay. Full screen mode couldn't have been applied from options in the option menu, blah, blah, blah. Visuals, VR, known issues, credit scroll down, non constant speed. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I enjoyed this, to be honest. I I legitimately enjoyed this. I, I, I don't think I'm going to be streaming more of it, but I, I do kind of want to keep um, playing this for a, a while longer, probably off stream. Maybe on the stream, on the Steam Deck, uh, if it, um, you know, if it will run this. Active power-ups, break the speed of sound, explode five times in a single lap. <laughs> Win an online match. This is like the, the worst, to be honest. It's too simple. I mean, I'm sure there's like hidden tech. Um, what's it called? I'm sure there's like hidden tech and like hidden ways to make it seem more interesting, but... I, I, I feel, I don't know, like, I, I feel you need to be like a special kind of, no, not special kind of person. Uh, I, I feel you need to be interested in racing games more than I am to make them look interesting to watch, right? Lie in bed playing a racing game on Steam Deck. I mean, eh. I, I've been playing like a bunch of JRPGs, to be honest, on the Steam Deck. Um, in fact, I think I've been probably playing solely uh, JRPGs for the last couple of months on there. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't stream them nowadays, so I, I need to get my fix somehow, right? Uh, but yeah, this is like easily something that I would like see myself playing on the steam deck to be honest uh it's interesting like okay it, it doesn't quite hit that like wow factor that uh wipeout had uh but it, it it's fun i like, i i liked it <laughs> just I, I i just don't think i can make it interesting enough to, you know, uh, stream. Also, yeah, it is like Steam Deck verified, so I could actually run Redout on the Steam Deck. It does Elden Ring run on Steam Deck? I, actually, yeah, it does. It's it's one of the games they 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 used to showcase the Steam Deck on their like web page, like the you know the the Steam Deck uh, showcase. One of the games that it it displays is like the Elden Ring. So it's like, yeah, there's like a, a short like video playing on there. So let's see what games can I kind of like recognize from the video. Um, give it a moment to loop. It's like Elden Ring, Control, Rogue Legacy 2, uh, Streets of Rage, Subnautica, I'm I'm not actually sure what the other one was like a first person shooter kind of thing. Might actually get one. Yeah. It's pricey. That's like all I'm gonna say. Like the only reason I got it is I pre-ordered it like a year in advance and then saved over that year to pay for it because even like the smallest version, the one that I have, is like four hundred and 
30 euros or something. And with that version, because it only has like 64 gigabytes of onboard memory, you do kind of need to also spend like between 50 and 100 euros getting an SD card of at least like 128 gigabytes. So that like you, you have enough space for like the bigger games. Um, if I had the option and the extra cash available, I would probably have pre-ordered the 512, like the, the, the biggest version that they have, which is like 680 euros, which is a lot. Um, and yeah, you get like an, like an NVMe SSD of like 512 gigabytes on board, but yeah, it, it's still, I don't know. It's pricey. Like there was certainly like a couple of times in my life that I kind of regretted, uh, committing to this, but you know, it, it, it has seen a lot of use. How much was the big one again? 680 euros. Let me just like copy the, the web page for you there. There we go. Mm. So it's like 420 for the small 64 gigabyte one, 550 for the 256 gigabyte one, the, the mid tier one, and 680 for the 512 gigabyte one. Um, and yeah, apparently they, they, they're like fully in, in, in production now. So you don't actually have to wait for like a year to get one like I did. Um, and there's like no waiting list or anything. But uh, yeah, very pricey. But yeah, I can see Elden Ring, Control, Rogue Legacy. Let, let me see if I can identify the other ones in the trailer. Streets of Rage, Subnautica. I don't know what the night one was. I think the other one was like Deathloop. Probably. Uh, yeah, there's like one game that I, I don't really like recognize, but it does play a lot of AAA games. It, it actually plays God of War and Spider-Man, uh, like the, the recent ones, very well. And also, uh, I've tried Monster Hunter World on it, and it, it works great. Um, let's have you so cute. Yeah, I know, it's like a lot of money. A lot of money. <laughs> Like, like I said, I actually like, uh, I actually like saved over the course of like a year to be able to afford mine. <laughs> and even then it's like the, the, the small version. I really don't get what like the, the, the second to last game is on the trailer, but eh, that's fine. Um, so if memory serves, uh, let me see if I have like the, the website for this up. There's like Proton DB. So there's like the, there's like a, a a crowd sourced compatibility uh database app as well. So deck verified games are like 2633 and playable ones, which means they're functional, but you may have to do like a couple of tweaks to get them to run optimally, are close to like 7,000. So I'm actually very curious to see. Let's see, deck verified, sort by popular, payday, to Counter-Strike, Grand Theft Auto 5, Deep Rock Galactic. I've actually played Deep Rock Galactic on the Steam Deck. It's fun, but the battery life is not great, so I wouldn't really recommend it. Cyberpunk also runs on there. Fallout 4, Witcher 3, No Man's Sky, Civilization 6, Stardew Valley, City Skylines, Dark Souls 3, Elden Ring, Subnautica, Raft, Sekiro, uh, Divinity Original Sin 2. I really have no idea how that's going to work on Mega Handheld, but sure. Nier Automata, Stellaris, Valheim, uh, Baldur's Gate 3 runs on there. It has like a silver rating which means you might have to tweak it a little bit. Um, yeah. Let's see, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Apex Legends, Sea of Thieves, uh, Factorio, Doom, Undertale, Assassin's Creed Origins, Darkest Dungeon, Dead Cells. I mean, 
like it's it's got like a pretty decent coverage of big name titles. It, not not just like AAA, but just like big name titles. Hollow Knight runs natively on it because it's got it's like got like a Linux version. XCOM 2, Cuphead, Satisfactory. Wait, Satisfactory runs on, on it? What? Oh, I need to read this. Uh, switch to community layouts. Yeah, there's like a few um, tweaks, but I guess Satisfactory also works on there somehow. Uh, Planet Coaster, Kerbal. Have a nice evening, man, and thank you for dropping by. I mean, I'm, I'm just going to call this now as well. It's like very interesting to see. It's like it runs a lot of things. Horizon Zero Dawn runs on it as well. Ho, ho, ho. Uh, but yeah, um, have a lovely rest of the evening. I think I think there's like no one else in chat anymore, so might as well just like not really care about the, the raids and stuff. Um, I'm pretty sure there's like probably no one live anyway for me to, to raid at the moment. Yeah, it's not even like loading anyone. It's like empty. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll see you hopefully... Not surprised Horizon runs when Elden Ring does. I mean, yeah, Horizon and God of War also run on it. And they're like pretty like intensive games. Like Monster Hunter World is not like the best engine. And it also runs uh, great on the Steam Deck. Which I, I, I was honestly surprised because I, I, that was like the, the first kind of like heavyweight game that I tried on it. Um, and if it wasn't like 80 gigabytes in size with um, Iceborne, I would probably still have it on for like a couple of, you know, fun minutes of gameplay. I mean, we can check. Let's see, Zomboid. Project Zomboid Gold says here. Um, not Steam Deck ready due to lack of usable default controls. Uh, but you can uh, play it by using community-made controls. If you feel like spending a few hours making controls and you need to enjoy Zomboid, you'll enjoy it. Otherwise, wait for official Steam Deck controls. Okay. Fair enough. Like 16 reports. This guy's got... Hmm. Okay. So the nice thing about the, the ProtonDB database is that like you can actually link it to your Steam Deck directly. So it pulls however many hours you've played and that's kind of like used to verify your ratings because ratings are manually submitted. But then it checks how much time you've spent in the game and uh, uses that kind of like to corroborate that you, you, you know what you're talking about. Uh, basically. But yeah, this was the readout for today. I wish you a very lovely rest of the evening. And uh, just log into your Steam account for the Steam Deck. Yeah, n no, you, you, you log with ProtonDB. Yeah, you, you log onto your Steam account on the Steam Deck, but for ProtonDB, the community-based uh, compatibility database, the, the second link that I put up um, that one requires that you actually log to their website from the Steam Deck. So it can actually check that you own a Steam Deck before you start uploading ratings for compatibility. Because ProtonDB, the link here, uh, is, is all kind of like crowdsourced. Like the, the users log in and they manually upload their ratings. Like... For example, Red Out, I've tried it on my Steam Deck, it works fine, thumbs up. And then the site actually checks that you've played the game on the Steam Deck and it says, okay, this guy is verified, he did actually try the game on his Steam Deck. And yeah, you know, because it's kind of like crowdsourced, anyone can just like go put up like any dumb shit if it, if it didn't have like a verification, you know? Anyway, yeah, this Steam Deck is using your actual Steam library and Steam account to get the games. Um, it's also very fun that it has uh, cloud support, like full cloud support. So I have 
over the course of the last few months been playing stuff on the Steam Deck over the weekend. And then like during like the like the, the weekdays I've kind of like continued them on the PC. Um more recently actually I've been playing uh Stranger of Sword City. Which is a rather fun, if not kind of punishing, uh dungeon crawler RPG. Highly recommended, but uh only if you do like this kind of subgenre generally. <laughs> It's fun though. It's like very fun. Like the the only like legit issue that I have with it is like the bad translation. Anyways, you're off. Yeah, me too. Kind of like kind of like gotten caught up on chatting. Have a lovely rest of the evening. And was it called again? Stranger of Sword City. Uh, let me get you the link. Copy page URL. There we go. Aha, this one. It's like a first person dungeon crawler jrpg basically um it's kind of like wizardry you know wizardry or um god what's like another one uh might and magic i guess or etrian odyssey it's very similar to etrian odyssey um except that there's like no mapping in 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 this it's like, like kind of like fun so yeah, have a have a lovely rest of the evening. I think I'm just gonna get some sleep as well. Uh, try to like give my muscles a bit of like a rest for tomorrow because tomorrow's gonna be a fun, 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 not very fun, <laughs> very tiring actually day. But hey, <laughs> um, but yeah, have a lovely rest of the evening, and I'll see you around tomorrow hopefully with um, I forget that thing uh, the thing on the spreadsheet <laughs> the thing that i forget at the moment um close to the sun you're off work tomorrow nice i'm not so it, it's gonna be at night again sadly but next week i'm off work and I'm, I'm i'm really planning on just like streaming like the shit out of like the remainder of the schedule to be honest but until then have a great evening day or you know the regional time equivalent, and I'll see you on soon. Bye-bye.